Yes. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first uh, of our Girl Underground streams, which will be happening. I, I, I do not know exactly how many times, but we're guessing like six -ish or so, maybe. Um, anyway, uh, after finishing up Blue Coats, uh, the three of us who were on that show uh, decided that it would be really fun. And we're all excited to play uh, Lauren's game, Girl Underground, which I have a copy of here and you should acquire a copy of yourself. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's do some intros. Uh, I'm Strash, he, him. You can find me on Twitter, at Strash A. You can see my little handle right here. Uh, I'm one of the regular streamers here on Actual Play. As a matter of fact, uh, you can see me and Lauren next week, Sunday morning, I believe, uh, for another episode of, uh, Skim and Villainy Persephone, uh, which is our space opera game. Uh, and that's all I've got to say. Lauren, take it away! Oh, to me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, rad. We're doing that. Hey, I'm Lauren. I use she, they. I am at the Stray Kiwi on Twitter. Um, I, I wrote, I co-wrote this game with Jesse Ross, who is a delightful human being. Um, uh, gosh, I spent all of today watching other Girl Underground streams, so I'm, I'm very pumped and excited to tell our own journey of a girl's fantastical adventures through the underground. Um, yeah, and when I'm not doing that, you can like what, yeah, as Star said, catch me as a, a robot <laughs> with a ghost face um, on Scum and Villainy. So uh, I guess that's for me. How about you, Judd? Uh, hi, I'm Judd. He, him. Uh, I'm very excited to play Girl Underground. I got it before, I think before I knew Lauren, or maybe right oh, as I knew Lauren. I like saw it and I was like, oh, this is, looks cool. And I was like, oh, I think I know that name, uh, which is super cool. And then you buy something from like a friend and you're like, Please, please be good. I don't know what I'll do if it's not good, and uh, and it's good. It's really awesome. Oh, uh, it's really so like glad. beyond good. It's really, really, really good. So uh, it's cool. And uh, other than that, I'm modeling good behavior, trying to show what uh, someone does when their friends play a game without them. So I'm just like the I'm the epitome of grace here. Uh, just happy for my friends playing a Sunday morning game of <laughs> Scum and Villainy without me. Fantastic. Um, you, you know, Judd. We, we can we can also play like an off screen off stream game of Scum and Villainy with. I know, I know, I know, I know. Because we heart totally, you and we think you're awesome. I'm, thank you. All right. I, I heart you back. Just so you know. I know, I know, I know. I'm just, I always play games with you. All right. I, it's only funny because it's true. That, that's the only reason why that was joke was really funny. All right. Excellent. Oh wait, that's all the interest. Oh, now now we play games. All right. <laughs> cool. All right, uh, Lauren. Uh, so okay, so. Uh, I don't know if I should like have to. Nah, it's fine. Lauren is the, going to be jamming this game for us, uh, at least for the moment, uh, and yeah. we're going to be doing a cool little two-player thing. Uh, so, Lauren, I'm just going to leave it in your hands. You're the GM. Take it away. Yeah, fantastic. So, for those who don't know, um, Girl Underground is a Alice in Wonderland-inspired PBTA game um, that focuses on, as I describe it, uh, having strange and wonderful adventures with your friends and fucking the patriarchy <laughs> and learning about yourself along the way. Um, so that's like roughly the tone we're going for. Whimsy, light, dark, some uncomfortable stuff may come up, but we'll get to talk about that um, during lines and bills. Um, and otherwise, yeah, just uh, not listening to what people tell you to do. Um, the game structure is a little bit different to your average PBTA game because our protagonist is a shared character. So if you're familiar with like Fall of Magic and other similar games, um, each player gets to take turns playing our protagonist throughout this adventure. Um, of course, it wouldn't be an Alice in Wonderland game without some wonderful companions. So each player will also get their own unique companion to support her along the way. You'll see some familiar faces, like our Puss in Boots, like Cheshire Cat Beastie types. There might be some Tin Men constructs who feel like things but are also alive. There might be some magical fawns who control magic and are whimsical and rambunctious. Um, and there might be like Peter Pan characters who fl like, fled to Wonderland and just loved it so much they wanted to stay. <laughs> so that's kind of like, that's what we're going to look at today, probably. Um, overall, this game is like a PG rated game. Um, as I said, there may be some uncomfortable stuff that may come up. We'll get to talk to about that when it comes. And otherwise, I think we can start the game. Um, boo, boo, boo. Oh yes, uh, for safety, I was, I was I never, like safety tools, X card is always on the table. Um, we'll get to talk about some themes we do and don't want to see. 
Oh, and, for oh, yeah. uh, those of you playing along and watching at home, I think the traditional, like, obviously you can just say, can I X card that or let's try a different way or something like that. But I believe the nonverbal cue on stream is... <laughs> yes. <So>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Carry on. Okay. Uh, yes. So, uh, and the most important thing is like, if you want to do a thing and you're not quite sure how someone might perceive it, just ask them, is it okay if I do this? <laughs> or like, would you be okay if that happened? Um, to sort of maintain consent throughout this game. Um, right. I think we'll, uh, if you want to, we can initially do some lines and bills. Um, it's up to you folks. I know we have a lines and veils uh, on the Excel sheet <laughs> behind the scenes, if you would like to add to it. Um, in general, uh, the protagonist won't be um, the target of violence. There might be threats of violence, but everything will be quite PG-13 and not particularly gruesome or graphic. Um, and much the same, there'll be you no know, sexual content targeted towards our protagonist. Um, that covers yeah. most of the things that I would imagine for me, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Excellent. Um, if stuff does come up, there is a live Excel sheet there you can add to anonymously if you would like to, and I'll keep an eye on that. I think otherwise, we can jump into making our go. All cool. right. So uh, do you have any recommendations or, hang on. I just noticed that my one screen was being a little weird. Um, do you have a, sh shall we just go through it? Because I believe that there are like a pile of suggestions and like pick lists in here for the girl. Is that? Yes. Yeah. There is a huge list of, uh, list of pick lists <laughs> to choose from the girl. I, I like to it round robin style. So each person gets to like choose a thing. Um, and then we'll open it up to the more broader questions on the uh, girl playbook. So um, our girl is a 12 year old girl. She's not of this world and she's trying to find her way back home. Home isn't perfect. In fact, there's a lot that's hard and unfair about it, but it's still home. There are people that, who love you, probably miss you, and are wondering why you haven't come inside for supper. Um, the girl has some principles. So when you play the girl, try to do the following. Ask probing questions of everyone you might you meet. Request help from your companions when needed. Desire what your home lacks. Be brave and take risks. Seek opportunities to learn and grow act against your matters and act in line with your beliefs. So the first question is, your family has love, but no, and there is a pick list there of calm, curiosity, money, time, or magic. Do those options speak to you or we can make up our own? <laughs> hmm. Judd, you gotta, you gotta come. No, you, 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 you've got something. I, I can tell. I was just trying to imagine a family with no magic. Like that seems yeah. like a normal family. What exactly are we talking about here? It's up to your imaginations. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, the, the way that that translates to me, by the way, is maybe that it's not that your parents hate you it's just that there is absolutely nothing that's outside of the rigors and principles like um the von traps in uh at the beginning of sound of music very much remind me of a family with no magic right like i think mm. that uh i'm sorry are, are, are old disney movies off limits or are, are we are we okay? no no okay. no no, no totally yeah, perfect, yeah the yeah. von traps come across as like it's not that the father doesn't care about the family it's that they're very militant and they have no spark of anything in them uh and then you know this character shows up and brings wonder into their lives um so that at least that's cool. how i'm interpreting it uh otherwise if we're the muggles of of this world that'd be really <laughs> odd Although it would explain why the girl ends up in another place strongly. Mm -hmm. um, how are we yeah. feeling? Yeah, I, I always thought the magic thing was like a lack of passion. I read that, I think, similarly to you with like a lack of, I don't know, uh, love of life. What, what are you feeling, Judd? Are you feeling like a moneyless poor girl having adventures are you, are you feeling like a, a girl from a family of 300 kids or, or well, 300 more like 10 <laughs> that 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 you know gets lost and maybe somebody doesn't even notice that they're gone like that's the quiet that i'm interpreting um mm. a family with no curiosity 
That's so sad. Yeah, the I, curiosity I know. one struck the, me as particularly sad. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't even know how to how to. I'm not sure I can play a character like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Character with no curiosity. Yikes. I I also wonder <laughs> if if saying that there's no magic at home kind of takes the brakes off and lets us really make the fantasy world really magical and weird. Uh, not that we're not going to do that anyway, but I don't know something about saying there's no magic at home almost is like a dare you know i'm okay with um, that you feeling yeah, it do- i'm feeling it we're gonna be playing yeah, fey i'm, I'm awesome. feeling it all yeah. right let's do it <laughs> but like, like the, you get a little name next to each of these and you can come yeah. up with your own so if you want to explore different themes there's a uh, there's one with blanks heck yeah so our family has a lot of it in magic so our name is fey and like you said it's, it's very important to sort of underline uh yes your family loves you very much there's just like one thing that they lack uh, which you will hopefully discover when you go into the underground. And the next question is, how do you wear your hair? Soft and textured like a sleepy cloud, long and wavy like a calm summer tide, straight and square like a ruler's edge, short and cropped like freshly cut grass, tangled and knotted like a fraying rope, or braided and flowing like a winding river. Uh, I don't actually hate any of these, but I think... <laughs> Describing hair as freshly cut grass is <laughs> a motif in my life. John, what you got? Uh, yeah, I feel like the freshly cut grass or a fraying rope are are the ones that speak to me. But I, I could totally both. go. Yeah, uh, let's go for a short and cropped. All right, awesome, excellent. Short and cropped, like freshly cut grass. And then, what do you sound like when you speak? Uh, dreamy, like a cotton candy cloud. Cool, like cool marble, a uh, cool marble statue. Soft, like a downy feather. Warm, like a summer breeze. Or bubbly, like a flowing brook. Hmm. Whoa, that's different than the list I'm holding in front of me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that may yeah. have been the old character. I've got a quick, like the <laughs> bolt of lightning. Oh, yeah. shoot. No, no, no it's di- quiet, like a secret <laughs> thought. Uh, um, we will replace that with the old character keeper. I was like, that looks about right. And then I was like, that's not right. <laughs> so <laughs> Sorry, it's all good. <laughs> Uh, do, do you have preferences? I, I, I think of girls having adventures as, as being maybe somewhat bubbly, but I'm, I'm okay also with like a, I don't know, a, a quiet, secretive, studious girl with maybe yeah. glasses would be cool yeah. too, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like someone who's quiet. I think that's kind of neat. All right. Or who starts off quiet. Though. Sorry, I'm Whoa. the kid of a librarian. <laughs> cool. <laughs> quiet like an old library. That awesome. sounds lovely. I wrote it in. Perfect. Yeah. Not like a new library because new libraries are not quiet. <laughs> and Don't then get me started. What is your prized possession? Something stolen, living, something you made, something natural, something given, or something domestic? And then what is it? Hmm. Well. Do you have this with you? The thing? You totally can. Okay. Yeah, it, it can come with you. It could stay behind. It could get stolen. It could get lost. It could get treated. It's so many uh, options. Huh. I have an idea, but it's very... I don't know what to call it. Um... Cliché. Oh, cool. what is it? <laughs> Cliche is good. Uh, having a, a amulet or jewelry given to you by a relative that may no longer be with you, like uh, mm. your grandmother gave you um, like a necklace with like a, a very specific patterned thing on it. Um, my brain, of course, is in my head drawing the Orin from the NeverEnding Story, but uh, it could be like a bracelet that has an interesting design or, you know... Uh, something like that. Like, something that... I don't like rings and I don't like earrings because they seem inappropriate, maybe, for, like, that size and age. And I feel like a necklace or a bracelet is almost over large. Like, an adult gave it to you and you wear it anyway, even though it doesn't quite fit right. And it could be cool. Mm. Um, it's just like an that. idea. Yeah, That's something something cool. given. Let's do it. Excellent. Right. And my next question... I'm dying to know this. Like, is this a thing you wear on you and like sort of keep close or is it like a thing you keep like sort of private in a way and like sort of 
Um, I think it can be both. Uh, can I make a? Can I? I'm sorry, Jed. I'm I'm I'm, I'm totally hogging this one. Uh, no, no, go. Can go, it go. be like? Uh, it, it's actually a a bracelet uh, shaped like a small golden snake or something like that. Um, mm. But it's too big for you to wear, so you you actually wear it like on a on a necklace underneath your clothes. So nice. you're both wearing it and it's hidden. That's cool. So is it like an Ouroboros, like eating its own tail? Yeah, and uh, it might even have like, or or it could just be like two snakes intertwined, where like one is silver, one is gold, and they have some cool colored jewel for an eye, like a a turquoise that your grandmother bought on some trip that she spoke about, like a wild adventure from her childhood. It was probably to something like Mexico, but like. <laughs> To, to a child, yes. that's that's a wondrous land that is so distant, it's very difficult to imagine. That is very cool. Ooh, I like that a lot. Uh, excellent. I have but who knows? Maybe before. your grandma also had magical adventures as an underground girl. So. Who knows? <laughs> we will find out. That, that may be a distinct possibility. Um, okay, what is your biggest fear? No, yeah, this one's hard. Is it, yeah, is it absence? Things like darkness, silence, or isolation? Rage, things like fire, monsters, or earthquakes, humiliation, bullies, imperfection, or failure, inability, paralysis, illness, or poverty, or judgment, worth, decisions, perceptions. And if that's different on the books, we'll go with the books. <laughs> I'm not super into inability, but the rest of them all sound interesting for different reasons. How you feeling, Jed? Yeah, I'm not drawn to any of them. I feel so sad about all of them that I don't Aww. know where to go. <laughs> I think it's important to to see the things that well let's talk about this differently uh, what do you want to have maybe so like a lot of these are metaphors for problems in your life maybe um, mm-hmm. so like rage could represent an angry parent um, even though you're of course scared of monsters it's very common for children to actually assume that their parent is a monster when they're angry and otherwise they're the loving parent that they actually know and love um, so like any, any of these could be interesting and sort of metaphors for like problems at home uh like yeah. if you do not have sure. a, if if like your dad has either divorced or left or is not at home uh absence could be a big part of your fears uh largely because i have a feeling we're going to be seeing this in the underground in some sort of metaphorical way no doubt oh uh, for sure yeah it's yeah. you know if you, if you want to experience things like yeah being like yeah like literal darkness that is a metaphor for something like that's a good one to go with um so there are things that speak to silence and isolation that'll be metaphors so like yeah whatever you pick here will for sure come as so, a metaphor in the Chud, game. do you want to go up against magical rulers which is judgment and my personal preference is for wicked witches over red queens um uh, bullies monsters and or natural disasters or Darkness, silence, loneliness. Hmm. I, the only thing that draws me towards absence and silence is that the fact that she's quiet. Um, I, I feel like she's she's maybe quiet because well I don't know is she quiet because she's trying to mimic the thing that that is a terror or mm. or, or is she quiet because she doesn't want judgment she doesn't want to bring her own judgment. Oh. <laughs> super sad that is super sad (laughs) let's go with judgment (laughs) all right okay we fear judgment worth decisions perceptions excellent um i've got so many questions about that but i'll save them for later because now we get to answer what do we want to be when we grow up which i've seen everything from like librarian to like adventurer we had science which like or like my brother wanted to be a pterodactyl when he grew up so like what? bits <laughs> yeah that's amazing <laughs> yes <laughs> that was a it was a very consistent through line <laughs> yeah <laughs> for him when he was um to the ages of oh gosh like three and five or something. Uh, when i was a kid i was so into dinosaurs and i was always so disappointed because everywhere uh, we traveled all over the world but never any place where I could actually like find a bone, and then I moved to Colorado, and I just I, the first like T Rex skull ever discovered was when somebody was gardening. They were just like, "Whoops!" So, oop. Excuse me for just a second. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, no, take your Judd, time. Keep, I... keep, keep doing the thing. Be doing the thing. 
I, I have a story about this too. Like I, I, I think it's why Faye speaks to me a lot because when, um, gosh, I think it was about 11. <laughs> I went to visit my dad's family in the UK. We went like a, a hike around some park area and I was being yeah. like really annoying and really loud. And so my dad's friend was like, Shh, like if you're quiet, the dragons will come out. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. So I was like, it's like very misty, like sort of English pop. I was like, I can totally imagine a dragon coming out. And that's great. Yeah, they, I was, I was very, like, I, I guess, like, I look back and I think gullible. <laughs> back then, I was right. like, just you know, embracing, embracing the possibilities of magic in my real, like, real yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, any, any, awesome. any words? No, yeah, I was, I was rambling. Oh, uh, yeah. So, what, what does Faye, our quiet uh, young woman who possesses a steak bracelet and fierce judgment, what would she like to be when she grows up? Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm seriously loving pterodactyl now. Um. <laughs> uh, so, so let me let me ask this question: Is Faye a realistic? child who has aged before her years or mm. is she a still a kid kid and has dreams that are perhaps larger than life right because like when i was a kid kid i wanted to be an astronaut or a magician or a zookeeper because i love animals and i'm good with them right but like some kids have something in their lives like if your grandma whose uh, bracelet you're carrying died from a disease maybe you want to be a doctor which is you know, a little less colorful, perhaps. Right. And also, we have some questions, like, what is the world above? I'm sorry, I, I default to the Alice in Wonderland. It's a vaguely 1800s British kind of society, but I mean, it could be magical or steampunk for all I know. Like, I don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Maybe what I want to grow up to be is, a, a, you know, a delivery witch named Kiki. Sorry. Um, totally. I don't know. What, what do we want to do? Yeah, that, I think that's an interesting question. Is, is she pragmatic or is she uh, or like what has life demanded of her? Right. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, um, it, this will, I think this will say a lot about how Faye, her family life lacks magic. So it's like if she likewise is like, oh, I'm very pragmatic, then it's like magic might be a thing that she discovers or like isn't quite aware that she's missing in her life. But if she is like, no, I will embrace the fantastic already, <laughs> then it's like, yeah. that's just a lot about how she deviates from like her. Well, I have an answer for each. <laughs> I'll just pitch it. I, I liked my doctor idea from earlier, so that'll be my pragmatic call. But if it's non-pragmatic, I think that what she wants to be is a mask maker. Ooh. Mm. It is a bizarre Very profession, convenient. but it's the kind of... Well, the way that I was thinking about it is, like, when kids read books, um, they will sometimes find a character that they fall in love with, an idea of something that they can do. Um, I know I did, obviously. Um, did I mention I'm a kid of a librarian? I've read a lot of books. So, uh, yeah. but it feels like the sort of thing that, uh, in particular, one of the things that masks do in masquerades is they provide an aspect of freedom uh, that is very difficult to deny like you can avoid judgment by not being yourself if you're wearing a mask nobody knows who you are when you say the things you say um and i think that there is perhaps an allure and a magic right like you can become anything you can become a wondrous beast if the mask is good enough um uh, yeah. and that you that can uh, be... you can you can avoid judgment right if no one knows oh, it's you that's, that's it. very good yeah. so, that's really, really i like good. the idea of a mask maker i think a mask yeah. maker is the way to okay. go yeah okay I like it too because it's like that kind of thing as a kid you can spin to be a bit pragmatic because it's like oh but like theater and like movies and stuff that's a that's a real job <laughs> like that you know yeah um, yeah that's good that is very cool oh, awesome. fashion consultant but only for masks <laughs> yes oh no reason... now i'm gonna have that cartoon theme song stuck in my head all right let's do this okay <laughs> for some reason this is also reminding me of like when i was younger and my teacher said i would make a good lawyer so i was gonna argue with them. Um. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My <laughs> guidance counselor in high school told me that I should be a professional asshole. <laughs> I was very That's interesting. really good. Yeah, it was a little bit different oh, yeah. back, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Of course, like, young me didn't quite understand sarcasm or like anything, so it's like, oh, you're totally right. I'd be a great lord. I'm sure like you're just being a bull. <laughs> yeah. Um, Excellent. So this is where we get to really open up uh, what this girl's home life is like with the very broad question. 
what is your home life like? And if you're in chat and you have a good idea for what our home life might be like, feel free to kick it out because I'm very interested to hear what everyone thinks of Faye so far. Um, our quiet mask maker who is Fia's judgment and has a gold snake bracelet. I will I think I'll kick this discussion off with who a list of questions on my zine here. Ooh, I feel like I have to ask, where do you hide when it just gets too much? Mm. Oh, Jesus. Uh, go for the serious questions. <laughs> there's classic answers. Uh, there's scary answers, like under the stairs. Uh, but like the basement or the attic because nobody goes there. Maybe even in the attic because I found old books, which is probably where a lot of this like reading might come from. It could also just be like the public library because mm. it gets you out How of the cute. house and when things get bad, you just don't want to be there and it's a place that you can be safe and it's comfortable and you can read stories and it's nice. Yeah, I know those kids. I like that idea a lot. I was totally not that kid. <laughs> Man, I that is very kids. cute. Is there a specific section in the public library that you hang out in when it gets too much? Or like a quiet room or something? There's a lot of cool... Man, libraries are magic. Like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> holy cow, I didn't know what a comic book was till I found a section in the public library and I was like, this is the coolest thing ever! But like... uh there's like places with old books. There's places with maps. Sometimes ancient maps, like that have been around for like hundreds of years, that oftentimes show places that don't exist anymore. That are kind of magic. It could oh, just cool. be that cool nook that was built once as part of some magical project that, uh, you know, now is just some cool nook that you discovered. But it's like difficult to get to and not obviously seen. So like you're one of the few people that actually knows where it is. Um, mm. Under the statue of a dinosaur. Sorry, still turned back. Oh, cool. Uh, I yeah, don't know, maybe, Judd, maybe, you're, uh, you're, you're an actual honest to God librarian. Like, do I you mean, have ideas? Maybe there's a, maybe there is a, uh, like a children's area where there's a mask exhibit. Oh, um, that's really cool. So there's that as a possibility. I mean, I remember, I, my, like I remember but my public library was not great for the township I was in. Uh, I think they were doing their best with the space they had, but it was kind of shocking based on the affluence of the area. And uh, I remember they had a, an exhibit where like somebody like put up all of their D&D &D miniatures and like painted, you know, in like 1985. And I was like, what is this? ridiculousness it's amazing uh so anyway yeah yeah I, I think that there is like a definite power to that like it 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 that didn't get me into D, &D but it was definitely like planted a seed that like years later would would come to bloom so yeah do maybe you play this game oh yeah. it's the one with the little minis yeah yeah <laughs> i remember that the little figures of yeah. course cool yeah i like the idea of maybe like uh, a, a room with like you know the the place where the mask exhibit is that is cool does that mean that like this um career aspiration is like kind of a new thing like when this exhibit sort of like came to the library it's like oh my gosh that's so cool or actually been, like, i want to a... say that the libraries had that exhibit forever it was some like oh cool dead rich person that was like had a mask collection and when they died like their estate just gave it to the library and they're like you may all, you may be the only person that ever has dusted them. They just like got hung once, and then like everybody just walks past them because they're like part of the background. That is super cool. But like to you, it's different, right? Like because like to right. you, they're magic, but like to everybody else, they're just you know the, the things that have been on the walls for a hundred years. That's amazing, and that, that totally happens. Awesome. That also totally happens. <laughs> Why are these masks here? I don't know. They've always been here. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is how we do things. Got it. That is super rad. I um, also realized I totally missed over the really obvious question, which is like, 
do you have siblings? Like, do you have a parent slash parents? <laughs> um, you obviously, I, I, I think this is definitely not an orphan girl, but I like, I'm, I'm enamored of the idea of a single parent. I don't know why. Judd, how are you feeling? Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm totally for that. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Does a single parent have a name and an occupation? No, because we never see them <laughs> from the waist up. Like, we only see their feet, because that's roughly how tall the girl is. Oh, excellent. Um, I love it. I'm, I'm sure they have an occupation, though. What is what is our... What is our par- Well, now we have to ask the hard questions. Like, what's the world like? Yeah, are we, like, sort of more modern day? Are we, like, more sort of hand-wavy in the past of Alice Wonderland times? Or a little bit in the future? Or... I would like some modernish pre cell phone era <laughs> how pre cell phone you know? era are we talking are we in sandals <laughs> <You know>? or <laughs> with light gloves or uh yeah somewhere between uh i don't know i think maybe could keep it kind of vague like you know you know i don't know i like the idea of keeping it kind of modern but vague uh for now and maybe if something comes up okay in which case, I like it. we should pick some timeless parental occupations. Um, I have horrific ones, like <laughs> the parent that survived is the dad, and they're in the military. Um, mm. Ooh. Because uh, there have That's been militaries for a very long time, and they create very specific <laughs> family dynamics. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like things like doctors and teachers and... That kind of stuff's been around Very forever. Very magicless career paths. <laughs> um, there's things that humans need. Mm -hmm. Humans get sick. Humans need doctors. Um, they're magicless because I'm specifically of. Oh, I see. You mean magic in the oh yeah, sorry, magic love in the... sense. Yes, my yeah. bad. <laughs> I was like, I'm avoiding the question of does our world actually have magic? Uh, ah. <laughs> my bad. We good. Uh, um, I like the idea of a. Uh, I like military. And I'm going to blend it with the other idea I have, which is lawyer. Oh, um, interesting. Like, yeah, like a, a military, a military baker bar. is the other one that I was going to go for. Something that's military lawyer baker. Military lawyer, yeah. Military lawyer, yikes! Yikes! I feel like that 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 makes that moves us to, like towards that judgment, like why there's that Just fear of judgment, car. right? Oh, well, yeah. it doesn't matter. A stern parent. <laughs> right. no, totally. my dad can make me totally. feel worse with just a, a look of disappointment <laughs> than any amount of scolding <laughs> so I, I've just I've known my share of lawyers who like uh, are very good at arguing and when they get into arguments or disagreements even with people they care about they play very like dirty uh, oh, they yeah, do those yeah. things where they like say something that gets you upset and then they like take a step back and they're like why are you so upset like you're getting you know you're you're losing your composure and i'm so calm i'm calmer than you are and and that kind of thing um so anyway totally and it, i know that when i was in law school like there were there was like that, that batch of kids who's like well my parents are lawyers and my granddad was a lawyer so i'm i'm a lawyer <laughs> and it's like there's a kind of expectation that you like yeah. follow along in that in that career yeah. path Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm also kind of getting that sense of like, um, because this family has love, it's like that awkward tween period where your parent really loves you, but for some reason miscommunication just starts happening and you start like not clicking and you know, there's a lot of fights. <laughs> um, yeah. So from like sort of stern military parent, I'm getting that kind of like, just we're talking past each other whenever there's like a disagreement and um, I love you so much, but like, we don't hang out the same way we did when you were a small child <laughs> because you're growing into your own unique I love being. you so much, but we get under each other's skin and sometimes we just find reasons to argue. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, this is feeling very real very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have, like, siblings or is this, like, a sort of single parent, only child, like, sit up? Oh, wow. That's Actually, also, like, I, I, really... have a, I have a counter suggestion. I'm just going to throw something oh, yeah. on the plate. What if our stern parent is the one that's missing? And we have oh. the other parent who's just trying to make ends meet with a much more mundane job, like um, running a restaurant. You must got to eat. 
That is fascinating. How do you uh, feel, Judd? Yeah, I like that. Because it, it provides in the past the thing that we fear, but we also can have unanswered questions like, what happened to that parent? That is very cool. And it's an impossible thing. Like, uh, dealing with the judgment of a parent who's not there is impossible, right? Like, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, like... The ghost of someone's judgment is more impossible to live up right. to than any living person. Yeah. Because you can heal rifts with living people. The dead... Until Faye, until Faye gets into staring. therapy yeah, in her yeah, late Sorry, 20s. I, I yeah. got a little bit of blades there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All good. Um, because, like, this is another question I have about Faye's interpretation of the world and, like, her... That sort of kernel of, like, magic that she has inside of her. Does she, like, invent stories about, like, this missing parent? Or is, or is she just like, kind of, like, a closed-off topic where it's like, oh, they're missing. And, like, we just don't really talk about that. <laughs> or did, like, that um, parent remaining explain, like, oh, no, they're they're gone. And, like, was very better. Uh, no, I, I definitely think Faye blames the living parent for this, this person not being there. Whether it's because they chose correctly or not. <laughs> Uh, Judd, how do you feel? Do you, do you think that this person is like put on a pedestal and made mag to be magically better than they were, or do you think that they're the terrifying monster we best leave in the past and don't talk about? It, there's, there's also middle ground. I'm, but yeah, I'm, I, I feel like there's a middle ground. I, I, I feel like the the parent who's missing is the one who everyone really worked hard to try to impress and get the attention of, and now that they're gone. Um, I think things are a little bit unmoored, you know? Uh, yeah, I just feel like everybody's having some trouble. So now, now that we've danced all the way around it, let's get back <laughs> to Lauren's original question, which is siblings. Um, mm -hmm. Do we want to be an only child? Or do we want to have a sibling, younger or older? Do we want to have two siblings, one older, one younger? So someone who's responsible for you and like maybe you're just overlooked. Mm. Ooh, making Faye a middle child. That's your plan oh, hardball. Be, yeah. <laughs> Which is like so fascinating if judgment is like a fear because you'd expect like to be an older kid, like that judgment is on you, right? For being like the the older responsible one. But it's like if you're a middle child, that's a fascinating spot to be in. Also fair in that judgment. I think it says a lot about yeah. about your family. Yeah. I like the idea of of being in the middle and having an older yeah. sibling and a younger. Yeah. I think that's neat. Excellent. Um, oh, and my other question was like, it's I, I got the sense that this like missing parent thing was kind of a new thing, or have they been gone for like a bit of time and it's sort of one year, one year, nice. A year yes. and a day is a very traditional. <laughs> This is so sad, Lori. I love it. Um, do, we, do we like to name our siblings, or would we prefer to focus like just on on Faye and Faye's story? Or I, 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 I'm I'm really bad at naming people out of like without context. So like I think it's okay if we just know that there is an older and a younger sibling, and we can detail them as as that questions come up. <laughs> oh, excellent! But In that case... random names for people is a little. <laughs> In that case, I would like one word to describe your older sibling and one word to describe your younger sibling. Or siblings. <laughs> I think the older sibling is trying too hard to take over for the missing parent and is oh, not doing yeah. a good job. I think the younger sibling is really smart and Ooh, nice. growing up to fill up the role with a lot less emotional turmoil than the older sibling. Interesting. That's neat. That's, that is really interesting. And kind of like leaves Faye in this weird spot where it's like, well, both my siblings are trying really hard. <laughs> like, what is my spot in all this? You are the overlooked one. The one that it's yeah. okay to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> so good. Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm used to like, where's my index cards? I gotta write sad things out of <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I feel like I've lingered on sad for so long. I would like to know what you do for fun. Read. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what, uh, is there like a genre you're drawn to? Like, is it 
fantasy non-fiction I, I, I have, I, ha- I actually have one more activity. I actually used to do this as a kid. I mean, nobody ever did this as a kid. Please don't do this as a kid. <laughs> I used to like act out books in the library. That 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 was like my thing, like the whole like, you know, pretending that the stacks that you could climb up once or twice on were like the mast of a ship, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, that is super cool. I totally did not do that <laughs> as a kid. I kind of I kind of love having like Faye be into sort of like the the theater and theatrics of of stories. I think that that that. Faye perhaps could become actually like a theater nerd at some point, but I think she's just too young to connect that this is fun and this is also a thing you can do. I think this is just a game, right? Like it's the thing that you do when you're bored and you want to do something fun. I, yeah. I'm going to add another thing yeah. to Faye. Um, yeah. I think uh, she wears her shit hair short. Uh, she has an older sibling. I think the older sibling wrestles and I think she wrestles too. Oh, that's um, cool. Wrestles? I, I think, yeah. <laughs> Can, yeah. can you explain? Like, uh, like her her older sibling is is a high school wrestler. Like, uh, okay, I can I can definitely yeah. see that. But eight to twelve year olds generally don't wrestle, as far as I know. Uh, it's embarrassing. I fought my siblings all the time. That's different. That is a statement, yeah, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but like, it seems like an odd. Sp- like, if you want her to be physically active and have a sport. That's totally fine. Just wrestling seems really odd for like the, yeah, the age bracket. I, oh, I, 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 I like it because um, right now in the news, in the grappling news that I follow that no one else follows, uh, uh, girls wrestling is becoming like a really big thing. Um, and like the the like states are starting to open up and, and uh, girls I wrestling teams are starting to become a thing. Can convince you to pick a different thing? sport? Mostly because I have no access to wrestling. It is cool. mostly a concept uh, in my head. Don't I, oh, oh but let's go with soccer. Soccer? We both yes! Soccer. Uh, nice. We both love cool. soccer. All right. Cool. And I totally hey. played um, soccer at that age range, so I can totally so relate. <laughs> then if if uh, if she acted out books like you did, then uh, the, the soccer thing that she'll do that I did is uh, th- there's a, a school with a wall nearby her house, and she punts the the ball against the wall and then catches it because she's a goalkeeper. Oh, nice. that's awesome! I will say I, I I cracked myself up with the idea of linking the acting to like wrestling, where it was like right. the WWE on TV and the older sibling was like, you know, it's all fake, and Faye was like, yes, <laughs> like, yes! <laughs> that's amazing. I could like act the stuff and dress up and that kind of jazz that's actually pretty cool i know that there's like a lot of local promotions that have much much more community involved stories and stuff they're basically like (laughs) weekend soap operas you can go to (laughs) oh cool i'm totally not going to mention that back when i was first starting to learn how to run nathan paletta's www i found out that there was a friday night promotion at my local vwf just like down the road from me i could walk oh nice oh cool (laughs) <laughs> so yeah. oh, that's awesome it is it is one of those like weird niche things that you don't even notice exists until like you suddenly start looking into it and you're like oh no they're all over the place so oh my god if there was a local wrestling promotion around where i live there'd be like definitely be a match with like a local versus a college kid like that would totally be a thing Jed, so, i'm the, serious the if you're looking into it, you'll probably find one that's all i'm saying yeah 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 Actually, uh, a colleague at uh, the library where I used to work runs a uh, like pretty well-known minor league promotion. It's pretty cool. So neat. Uh, right, but anyway, cool. we're, we're, wrestling's gone. That's a different thing that we're talking about. Soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soccer. She's, she's, Football. She's a goalkeeper. OK, and I, I only ask this because judgment is like a theme. Um, does someone bully you at school? And. I'm sorry, so why? Oh, does someone like uh, bully bully you at school? Quiet kid with glasses, eight to twelve, reads a lot, gets bullied at school. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> I don't know who's 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 our who's our terrifying nemesis, Judd, who takes our lunch money. Oh mm-hmm. man. Um. Uh, I can't. I. Uh, my my wife had the best like her, she had a terrible uh, uh, bully in her 
passed and I can't say his name because he's actually a real person. So I. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Can, can we, we? We can. We can use thematic elements and then rename them. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh. Well, his first name was was uh, Damien. Uh, Good enough. His last, his, that's that's, his a, last... that's a nice omen yeah. name. <laughs> yeah. And his last name was a metal. So like, let's just go from there. Uh, um yeah let's just say damien why don't we just damien. say damien excellent <laughs> damien um, steel <laughs> sounds like a character from a book it is he like, a novel or something and is damien like in your class or is it like the kid who waits till you're out of uh school and then like tries to corner you like are they a bit like, older like what yeah how much interaction do we have with damien uh Yeah, Damien definitely waits for her outside of class. Um, I think before he went missing, our dad court-martialed Damien's dad. Ooh, oh, beefs off of parents. Yeah. yeah. Solid. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it. Dad is really good. And sad. Yeah. Uh, I worked in a small upstate town where there was a state prison and so you had kids who were whose parents were guards and kids whose parents were who had moved to the place so they could visit their parents oh it, wow yeah yeah that, that's a thing but anyway that's not our thing but just <laughs> it's a terrible thing uh yeah anyway all right it anyway, speaks to me too because my, my mom was sure that uppity parent that was like telling the school that they were doing things wrong. And then uh, if other parents were involved, those parents would tell their kids, then those kids would like tell me when to get off. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a real thing. Yeah. Awesome. No um, I'm trying to think. I kind of feel like Faye, Faye's a lot sort of like stacked against her. So who is, do we have like a best friend that like mm. we, enjoy whether that's like an imaginary friend like a real friend like a toy that you have that you talk to a book like the librarian <laughs> uh, hmm i feel like saying that that like the best friend is is like a, a children's librarian at the library is just so profoundly sad because it's upsetting <laughs> uh is, is it someone you play soccer with oh yeah uh, it could be a soccer friend is it is it your center fullback uh i don't know do you have strong feelings rush no this is not a person that strikes me as somebody with a best friend i just didn't see that one coming so yeah uh... maybe not Maybe not. Uh, maybe, maybe they don't have a best friend. I, I I have a I have a different posit. Uh, maybe Ooh. we can run with this. How about it's somebody that used to be your best friend, but you're not oh. quite on the same page anymore. Uh, it's like somebody who was your your childhood friend, somebody that lives like three to four blocks away, and it's the kind of person that you used to like have walkie talkies and stuff with, but. You've been dealing with your stuff, and they don't really understand how to help you deal with your stuff with a missing parent and whatnot, and so uh, it just hasn't quite been the same for a year. Yeah, or or it's a military family, right? They moved away. Oh no, that's the oh. worst. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so is so it like, is it a now pen it's pal? Letters. Is yeah. your is your is your is your best Aww. friend pen pals with you? Totally. Okay, so that's like the brightest spot in the month is when you get Aww. the reply to your letter, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also love the idea that it's somebody who used to be on your soccer team, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I love it too, because it's like, oh gosh, that, <laughs> I find this, playing this game, you bring out so much of your own, like, freaking childhood, but yeah, I, I for sure had, like, that friend who, like, had to move away, and, like, when we were best friends, it was like, oh, we're into the same things, like, we lived really close to each other, 
like like the same bands and then like they moved and I was like that was the most like gut wrenching thing for like my wee childhood. <laughs> anyway, yeah. oh gosh, I overshit. <laughs> well, oh no, I I I I was the friend that moved, so. I, oh I, yeah, yeah. I grew up in a family that moved a lot, so. So many feelings, Lori. Um, awesome. I kind of feel like that's. I have a really, really, really like solid handle on on Faye now. I think we know a lot about her family and her uh, friend situation, what she likes to do, and that kind of thing. So, uh, I was double checking my story guide section. Um, oh yes, my favorite part. Oh, well, second favorite part is. Uh, Picking manners, my favorite part is breaking the manners. So I'm just gonna you to have your copies of the zine there. I do, I do, actually. Excellent. They're on page twenty seven is a huge list of manners. Um for those who may or may not know, this list of manners are things that like appear in Faye's life. They're not necessarily things that like are enforced by parents or like that kind of thing, but are just things that she's like picked up from like navigating the world around her as we all do as young people, we're kind of like sponges. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's a big a... page list, if I recall. Oh, yes, it is on page 27. Oh, all right, well, that's and... handy. <laughs> um, so we'll... oh, no, <laughs> there are no page numbers in this section. Where... Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's right, I was <laughs> that in the character, I was in the playbooks. So, all right, we get you. So, well, I guess we'll, we can take turns or like sort of workshop because we have such a delightfully small group <laughs> of what kinds of manners that Faye experiences in her life um, that will get to break and explore and stuff in the underground. These are things like young ladies must be grateful for what they're given or the one that really speaks to me. Oh, what was it? Young ladies must never show anger. Mm. Yeah. I feel like that's a good one, right? For our for our faith. That, that's that's <laughs> why I, I I was just like scanning now. My eyes were just like that one. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. one. Talk back that's to adults. One. Oh, that's another good one. That was one young Judd had a lot of trouble with. To their elders, please, Judd. They elders. don't have to be adults; just your elders. Just your elders. I'm sure but your you... older sister has opinions on this topic. Yes. I I really like if if Faye is like secretly into magic, I kind of like the idea of uh not bragging or showing off or being ridiculous or silly or All of these um, sound delightfully terrible to <laughs> have not do as a rule that you're trying to not break maybe. Or um not uh what was it? Oh, uh not tell lies. That'd be another good one if you're into masks and stuff. Um that one's mm, fun. That's a, that's very good. There's a lot of good ones here. Oh, <laughs> Must always look before you leap is uh, charming in some ways. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> young ladies must always keep their feelings to themselves. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> must always follow instructions. That one was a jittery. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, always keep a smile on their face. Is it good for you, Strash? Yes, it is terrible. Okay. I, 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 uh, it makes me itchy on the inside, which means it's good. Excellent. I will say you're welcome to veto anything, and we just we just take it off the list. There's no obligation to yeah. explore stuff that you're not interested in. But that sounds like it's a good and uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's a good one also because it feeds into the mask thing, right? Oh yeah. yeah. It's facial. That's very yeah. good. Yeah, that's 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 uh also kind of a creepy touchstone, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if for for one shots I typically do like six, but since we might do any number of sessions, we'll do we'll do eight and then we can um all right. then we can uh, explore them as we go. So we have space for four more. Look before you leap is always quite cool. <laughs> Do you like it, Lauren? Yeah, I like that one. I find it charming. I'm not like, 
gung ho about it in the sense that like, oh, we gotta have that one. But like, I like it. Judd, how are you feeling? Yeah, I yeah. like it. I think. That's yeah, a let's good put one. it on the list. Okay. Excellent. And there's more you're into Judd. I know, I know like Strash and I jumped to that list like, oh my god, <laughs> how can how can we uh, bring out all the uncomfortable societal expectations? But other others that you are super digging. What are you thinking? You can also add some other ones not on the list if you would like. How many do we have? How many more do we need? And and would uh... you be so kind, Lauren? Because I heard you're typing, so I know you're keeping track of this better than we are. Do you have a Oh yes. I uh, actually I can can I do this? Let's see if this works. These are our current ones. Eh, eh, there we go. Those are our oh I just merged into one big sentence. <laughs> but <laughs> I just pop the ones we currently have into chat. Oh. Uh, in chat. Which chat? Oh the actual play chat. And then there's the Excel sheet um on the girl playbook. I'm just keeping track of this for when we wanna okay. make it all neat for next time. Um we can also like if we're good we can stop and then add more if we uh, run out. <laughs> it's also an option. Yeah, it's it's always good to have them in the back of your mind as a set of rules, so I, I wouldn't mind <laughs> mm, mm -mm. No, I don't think I could even make myself like pink and florals. <laughs> uh, actually I actually don't mind pink, it's just feeling it as a mandatory is weird. Yeah. Uh, it also doesn't it Maybe runs a bit counter to like her home upbringing if her yeah. parents are more focused on like sort of uh, responsibility and that kind of thing and stuff with her missing parent. Um, what are some other ones? Um, vex must never vex others. That's a good one. I'm That's in. cool. Yeah. What so this is a bizarre can... one because, like, as a soccer kid, I mean, it's, you do slide tackles all the time, so this is very hard to pull off. But um, young ladies must never soil their hands or clothes is it feels like in a family that's pressed for time and chores, damage to clothing can be kind of like a stressor, mm. and it can be definitely a, a point of contention, and it's part of that whole like magic, like. You were gifted this, so you must respect it and take good care of it. And gosh, what a tragedy if something happens to your clothes while you're playing as a kid. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, especially if, like, your younger sibling wants to do soccer and it's like, well, like, that uniform could be good for when you grow out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it reminds me of a childhood story. When I, I was six years old when I started playing uh, and... My mother, my mother went to the coach because he had told her that I was going to play goalkeeper. And she was like, Jed doesn't like to get dirty. Like, I don't know what you're doing. And he, I guess she hadn't like watched any practices. So he was like, uh, I think we're going to be all right. And, uh, <laughs> and I was just a savage, uh, it turns out, when I was in that one little context. Um, and they actually had to pull me out of the game because I told off a ref and got super aggressive <laughs> at six years so old. Good. At six years old. That so, is a anyway. <laughs> Uh, That's why I secretly love this game, because <laughs> yeah. you little, like, neat tidbits about how much of an a-hole you were when you were a kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, we have a space for one more. Um, oh, gosh, there are so many other, like, there is not going to, like, places, other people Ooh, complain put, about their duties. Oh, put yeah. Others, put, put others' needs before their own, I think is interesting, because it's the middle child, so you've got to, like... Ah, oh, yeah. I am behind this pretty strong now. I like that, Judd. Good catch. Yeah, thank you. And it is for others' needs for their own. Yeah. <laughs> I um, uh, Strash, I'm surprised you didn't pick up on the uh, manner about thank you for your feedback, but go fuck yourself, which is. <laughs> Which is, young ladies must respect others' opinions. <laughs> uh, I... Oh, that's... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Do 
we could just swap one out. We could swap one out. We we have time uh, if you would like to. I, I just thought it was funny. Must <laughs> that, respect that others' opinions is a great one. Uh, <laughs> oh no, there are so many good ones. We can add as a secret nice. It's totally fine. Oh, okay, okay. We, 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 let's let's add it. We can we can talk about if we want to prune one before next yeah. time. But I feel like a lot of these are on topic and on brand. So like. I think that if we swap one, it'll probably be okay. No big deal. Plus, who knows, if we play this forever, then we'll need some more minutes <laughs> to come up against. <laughs> nice. um, excellent. Cool. We have a list of manners. Let's scroll back down to the story guide step by step, because despite running the, uh, writing this game, <laughs> my memory fails me. Okay. Um, so, which manner do we think Faye like has already broken like this is a thing in her life where she's like I already get the society doesn't know what it's on about this one thing in particular is like I don't buy that <laughs> I have two strong feelings share them um, yeah. young ladies must not talk back to their elders in a family that's like stressed the way this one is that might Although, she might solve that problem by simply not talking. Um, although, uh, young ladies must not tell lies. Uh, that that you can't survive in that <laughs> 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 That telling a fib or two. Uh, a fib or two, yes. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling that that's a lot of how you get out of pain and annoyance. How you feel, Judd? Yeah, those are good. All right. I like both of those. Okay. I'm for putting bullets and lies. How are you feeling, Lauren? Yeah, we can put bullets and lies. Let's do it. I, I have to know though. Like, was there a time where you got caught in a lie, or have you always been like a like pretty smooth fibber? I think it's like one of those things where you try not to lie, but eventually you just do, and when nothing happens, oh, you're like, oh shoot, hang on a second, <laughs> this worked. <laughs> Adults don't know everything always, all the time, perfectly. That's actually yeah. a, like a really powerful moment when you realize that, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I remember exactly the moment I realized that. Oh no! <laughs> it wasn't anything <laughs> scary. It's uh, I've I've struggled all my life with insomnia, and my parents kept assuring me that if I just lied in bed and stayed quiet and closed my eyes, I would fall asleep. And when it didn't happen for more than six months, I was like, hang on a second, they're full of shit. Right. So, <laughs> right. It was it, it was nothing scary. It wasn't terrifying. But I was just like, oh, maybe they're just not right about everything in the world. And they don't know everything. That's, uh, that's a very scary moment where you're just like, hang on a second, I know something that my parents don't know. So... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it reminds me. I did the most like cartoon thing when I was a kid, which is I, likewise. I, I just have a hard time falling asleep. I um, mean, one night, like I just couldn't sleep for whatever reason, and it was reading it in bed or something. And like Dad came in to check on me, so like I flipped the light off, like put the book, book under my sheet, and was just like, oh, just like straight, <laughs> like a really, like a really bad like cartoon acting way. <laughs> and I, I don't, I can't remember if my dad like. I told me, hey, I know you're awake or not, but uh, that sticks out in my memory. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Um, okay. Excellent. Um, so, what we'll do now is we will <coughs> do a short bit <coughs> montage finding our door. Um, All right. So, this little montage will give us a little, like, glimpse into Faye's life. It'll give us each turns to, like, embody Faye and, like, try and get into her head and um, get to see the world through her eyes. So, what I'll largely ask, like, leading questions or, like, very, like, sort of drive the narrative quite hard towards, like, a point where we'll find the door. Um, So, there's no roles or anything. It's just my favorite story game bullshit. (laughs) So, um... Let's let's see. I think it's only appropriate to open up like after a day at school with Bay. Um, I'm sorry, my cat is lying on his back and he's snoring. <laughs> <laughs> it's adorable, but also 
something weird. I love my cat. So, <laughs> Please <very> continue. <laughs> um, so I think we open like, yeah, it's, it's like after school. Um, I think Faye is on her way home. I think she walks from home. To, it feels like that kind of environment where she could walk from like school to home and, and back. Um, now that she's like a big grown up 12 year old and doesn't need to be like walk to school and back um, with their siblings. The day I think is like a little bit overcast. Um, ooh, yeah, perhaps she even like had to stay a little bit late because it was like soccer practice. Um, but of course she's not too dirty or too soiled. I think like uh, maybe I like, cleaned some mud up of her boots before she packed them up and slept on her way home. Um, and I think we see kind of like this shadow cast over like Faye as she's walking home and like she looks over her shoulder and she sees like Damien, right? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I would love to do like uh, Strash, like what does Faye do when like she sees a Damien's like closing in? Does she like speed up or walked across the street? Like what does she what no, do? No, no, I, I, I think she tried speeding up a couple of times. It only ended with worse. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think she carefully puts her glasses into her backpack. Oof. Nice. Oh, man. It's so pragmatic. Jeez. <laughs> that is very great. Um, I think, like... Uh, do you want more? Of- like, I, I, I don't know how much you want out of this. Like, are you asking a specific question? Are you going to just rotate some questions? Or, like, what are we... What's the... What's oh, no, that's the perfect. That's, that's... Okay. The, the flow is just, like, whatever you feel like adding. And then we'll just, like develop the story a little bit more it's all good if you want to like run wild with it that is also totally up to you but i think like we see her put her glasses in her pocket um and then like that damien shadow like it's a little bit closer no can't be pocket oh it's got to be backpack because backpack the backpack will not get squished so your glasses will be safe so you'll be able to see afterwards and you're not going to get yelled at for having broken glasses while you're bleeding from some part if you put in your jacket you're going to get shoved to the ground your glasses will break that's good to know. <laughs> and I think, like, um, you feel, you hear the footsteps of, like, Damien getting closer, and then you feel, like, that hand, like, the handle on your backpack, right, like, kind of grab you. Uh. And <laughs> sort of, like, pull you back a bit, and you sort of stop in your steps. And um, Damien, I think, says, like, where do you, like, where are you going so quickly? And uh, does Damien have, like, a, does Damien have, like, a name that he refers to, like, or eyes or like some other some other like bookworm or some other name that he calls you kids are not that creative they're usually no. just like <laughs> stupid stupid yeah <laughs> uh yeah it's something i mean it could be something with a name right uh, oh yeah it's tough right like phase not <laughs> Yeah, it's a terrible nickname as a kid, but like, yeah. Faye's not really easy to mangle like that, right? Like, it's a, it's a pretty no. straightforward name. I feel like if it, like, the names that I got called at a school, it'd be like, Fought instead of Faye, which like, doesn't really riff off of your name, but it's, yeah. <laughs> um, so maybe he just says, like, he grabs your backpack and he says, like, hey, where are you going so fast, Faye? Um, what do you do, Judd? Uh... I think I, I face slips out of one shoulder of the backpack and turns, but like holds on to the other, like keeps the other one really like tight and uh, and just says like, let go, dingus. Nice. I think like, um, I have a question. Do you have like the snake bracelet on you? Always. Yeah. Nice. I think Damien catches a glimpse, a, gl- a glimpse of that, right? Like as he grabs your bag and your arm comes up to like slip out of it. Um, I think he maybe even like tries to catch your wrist and um, says like, oh, I never noticed that trinket before. Why don't you give it to me? You don't want it. The snake would bite you. Uh, it would bite me. That's a yeah, much right. smarter than what I much smarter answer than what I would have done, Judd. <laughs> yeah, these you know, these snakes bite assholes. 
I like to see it try. So like it's a bit cocky and it's like, come on, snake, like bite me. So like holds itself a bit prone as if to be like, yeah, come on, like you know you want to try it. I think it bites him. That's super great. <laughs> Did you get that? Like we get that sort of cut away. It's like he like goes like ah, and, like sort of cries out of it. We don't quite see what happened, but like Faye, I think like grabs it or runs. Grabs it, yeah, grabs it and runs <laughs> right. <laughs> and she feels like the backpack like slapping a bit up against her back, and she like takes off. Um, no, I, I think she's running with that. Like Jed described it very well, oh, like holding it almost yeah. like a shield in one hand. Yeah, I think That's she cool. she has like the 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 necklace with the bracelet like trailing behind her and like the backpack in one hand and i have a feeling that one of those snake eyes turns red oh that's very cool yeah so nice. you're like running it with like a shield i, I mean presumably you hitch like what's the library yeah that, yeah that's actually probably safer than home cool totally it's like i think maybe damien like lives a, like near you maybe he's like trying to follow you like on the way to school or so it's so, like yeah the public library makes sense um, yeah and I think the the room with the the mask exhibit is like this little side room that uh, gets used during the day for like, uh, you know, teaching adults to read who don't know how to read. But um, it, it's also kind of like the room where they just stick everything they don't know what to do with, including <laughs> these masks. Um, and like, I still it's love like the, the idea of old maps and display cases. Oh, totally. I know it's totally. usually those like super thin shelves that you pull out. And, like, yeah. But yeah. For for the purposes of our show. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. It's like the map room and the 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 program room and the mask room, and uh, yeah. I I have an idea for the the door, but uh, I don't want to. Oh, what is your idea? Um, my idea is that there's one mask and and Faye is kind of like out of breath and and trying to like get her composure back and uh, she like puts her hand up on the like to, to brace herself on the wall and she like touches one mask and then like as she I kind of like doesn't realize that she's pulling the jaw down oh, and like cool. the mask becomes the door. That's red. I love that a lot. I, that's so perfect. I listen to like sort of cut away on that as like, you know, Faye's like heart is like pounding in her chest and like that jaw opens. Like maybe um, she like goes to, like she sort of phases through a bit and sort of like falls through that way. That's pretty cool. For whatever reason, Judd. Yeah. And and th this is now canon. So let's, let's leave that in place because it's awesome. Uh, yeah. For whatever reason, I also imagine that many of these masks were like <clears throat> had animal aspects. Like they were, they were. Maybe it's because they were hanging on walls. So my brain was merging the concept of a mask and like the heads that hunters sometimes mount. But like, imagine taking like a, a wild boar and turning it into a mask that you can wear. Yeah. And I was imagining like one of these things maybe coming to life, uh, and her like catching a ride somewhere. It's a very different form of the phrase door, <laughs> but uh, no, actually I dig it. I love the, I love the mouth as, as a portal concept. Uh, that is very cool. Getting cool. swallowed whole into another world is a completely different way of getting there than. So that kind of thing where like she faces, like she goes through like the, the mouth, but like her backpack stays behind, like it sort of thuds against like the. Oh no, <laughs> she lost her glasses. <gasps> Uh, it, 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 everything could totally go with her. I, I just wanted to put that out as like a as a suggestion. <laughs> I, I, that's cool. Yeah. Red. Okay, like so like it. we cut it's away. It's a very vulnerable oh, yeah. position when things are somewhat blurry. Oh yeah. I like that heaps. Yeah, so we see like she goes through, and then like her backpack like sort of thuds against like the display and sort of lands on the ground, and maybe it's like some page like loose pages or paper that sort of goes like and like flutters down again it's like she just fits through it and then the library's normal <laughs> um but before we can get to wonderland we need to populate it with some fun companions um and then after we make some companions we'll take a, a quick break while we refresh tea and that kind of thing yeah um so we have a number of playbooks of varying themes and wonders so we have our um beastie who is like as i said our cheshire cat puss in boots um 
rambunctious animal figure that talks back to authority and uh, gossips and all that kind of fun stuff. Red we have Riding our... Wolf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have our construct that really grapples with ideas of like uh, objectivity and subjectivity and like what it means to possess a physical body, but also have like a living spirit inside of you. Um, they spend a lot of time talking to things and trying to figure out who they are. We have our fawn, who is our childlike whimsy that you never really want to let go of when you're that age, who is all about magic and uh, partying and having fun and that kind of thing. Um, but deep down, they're kind of like are trying to also figure themselves out and what it means to grow up. Uh, we have our mythic that is all about being the last of your kind, being very sad, um, remembering being a luck dragon. Being a luck dragon, yeah, sacrificing yourself when it matters most. Um, we have our ogre that is like that sort of shame and confidence that you grapple with when you're 12, um, wanting to like find your voice, but then also like being ashamed to speak out and be an individual. Um, there can be some themes of like uh, being too much or too loud or too big and then wanting to sort of like pull that back and pull this. Ugh, really uncomfortable themes. And then we have our runaway, who is our Peter Pan, almost like um the opposite of the fawn. They're sort of stuck being a kid, but they'd like it. <laughs> Despite the fact they're running away from something that terrifies them. Um, they love dark places, they love adventure, um, but deep down they just like want to find friends and have a lot of insecurities and that kind of thing. Uh, what is calling to you? <laughs> I have a bunch of these that I really like. So Judd, do you oh, have good. your heart set on something? <laughs> I don't. I really, really, really don't. I have only the vaguest of ideas for a lot of them. Um, I have some pretty strong concepts for uh, the beastie, the mythic, and in particular, the runaway. Okay. Uh, I think I think they're all good. I just... I'm glad. <laughs> What what's your idea for the runaway? Because I have an idea for the runaway too, but I don't. Oh, know. I I, I want to be like, uh, I want to be a, a master thief. Oh, cool! Hell yeah! I want to have, nice. uh, you know, I, and I I think maybe like staying in this this other place changes people. So I want to be like, not entirely a kid anymore. Maybe like have you know. A little too much wonder in my wonderland, like cat-like eyes, that kind of thing, you know. Could could we do something where uh, there's some kind of nod that this is clearly a piece of the grandmother who, like, went to Wonderland and never came back? <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Strong. Well, I mean, no, actually, it could be, it could be the grandmother's best friend that uh, oh, nice. actually stayed. Nice. Uh, I mean, it's a it's yeah. a form of a piece, right? Like the best friend that's missing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Right, like, uh, yeah, I kind of dig it. Cool. Because like the whole story of Peter Pan, right? Like, is like P Peter Pan was tied to that family. He just showed up to him. It was the next day, but to them, it was like years later, like decades right. even. Right. That yeah, is I'm very not... cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, we, I think we could also do something with the construct where it's the, it's, it's one of the snakes, right? Oh, that's super cool. That could also be a mythic. That's across my mind, yeah. Oh, that could be a mythic. Giant snake mythic. Yeah, giant snake mythic, I think, is the way to go. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I mean, we, I, any, any, there, there are lots of ideas. I, I, the construct is a sad robot, and I love sad robots, so, um, <laughs> if, if, uh, if my friend... Uh, FF is still watching, you know. Sad robot represent. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. There's a, there's a, there's just a lot of good good options. Like, are you feeling anything in your heart, Judd? Are you excited about anything? I'm not. I'm not leaning towards anything. But I like them all. Uh, and I also am a fan of sad robots. So uh, <laughs> I, I there's think some really really cool um, moves in the construct, actually. Yeah. It's a neat move. Uh, it's called Things Speak. Uh, no, every, nope. I think the we spirit renamed everything. It. <laughs> the spirit of everything, yeah. <laughs> um, and that one, yeah, you get to sort of uh, like quite literally talk to um, physical objects and they can either talk back to you 
um, or on a six minus. Hilariously, my favorite move there is actually um, a heart not judged because it establishes your position as the inanimate object that is the only one that can warm other people's hearts. And it's, uh, that's, 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 that's some feels right there. <laughs> that is um, some big feels. Yeah. And it's also, <laughs> they have some rough moves when they're trying to figure out people. <laughs> um, yeah. They totally do. Plus, they can be total badasses. Like, I, I just love playing characters where, you know, they can rip off their own arm and use it for a thing because, like, they have moves for that. So... <laughs> Yeah, and then oh gosh, yeah. The other the other thing to take into consideration is the mythic has that like sacrifice yourself to like. Oh, the mythic is cool just things. a great book, and being a luck dragon is freaking <laughs> awesome. Uh, but like, you can only play one book, or you can only make one book. So you can, yeah. Yeah. You feel a more sad robot sword. Uh... Then in, you could also play like a beastie. Like I w- I would play like you know a seven foot wolf because why not. Heck yeah. <laughs> um, I, you also mentioned like a, a giant boar mask. So maybe like a beastie that's a giant boar. Yeah. That's... Oh, that also works. Yeah. I just like wolves. <laughs> Who doesn't like wolves? I, I mean, doesn't everybody? Um, I, I like a giant boar, though. Boars are really uncommon. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, it's really kind of talking to me. Yeah. I'm feeling I'm that even go more. With a, I'm gonna go with the beastie who's a giant who's, who's like oh. the the manifestation of the giant boar mask that's on the. It's uh, not necessarily the one we walked through, but it's like it was it was on the wall. I I think I think I'm gonna go with the runaway, and I oh. think that she's definitely going to be wearing a cat like mask, even though her eyes appear cat like. Um, because if you're a master thief, you clearly have to disguise yourself uh, and totally not look like a superhero. Um, uh, but yeah, I think that there was a cat mask on the wall as well, like a like a just feline aspected, very Cheshire catty maybe. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. Very very cool. How you feeling about that? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, Lauren, I know that in pregame you were like, maybe I will make a companion, and I was just like, yeah, okay. Uh, you you still feeling that? You wanna you wanna hold off on that? Like uh, that's a good question. I'm very curious to see how this plays for them two companions. So part of me is like, I wonder, like, it'd be cool to get this sort of very intimate, like, buddy, like, this is the three of us against the wall kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I was wondering. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe I'll introduce them if I feel if it feels necessary. You might bump into someone along the way who uh, can help flesh out your your group if it feels a bit too um, hollow. So we'll run cool. with the two cool. of us for now. Because this is a magical place where you can meet companions on the road is pretty much the plot of every Wonderland story I can imagine. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> Girl true. Goes to Magical Land is also like, isn't that an, there's an entire genre of anime based on that, I'm pretty sure. Oh, definitely. I have, I've read some articles about it. <laughs> um, excellent. I wonder... I, I'll I'll put this question out to you folks. Like, would that be a good time to take a short break while we fill out playbooks and then introduce yeah, characters? That sounds yeah. wonderful. That's perfect. Red, Let's I'll find that. some locations to go to. All right. Thank you so much. Whoa, we have so many viewers today. I don't. Um, oh all right, God. folks. We will be back soon. We're gonna make some cups of tea and make some playbooks, and then we will come back and introduce our wondrous characters. Please don't go away. Please hang out with us because. Yes. Uh, Having having pop in chat and, and and viewers is awesome. So um, oh yeah, I see like so many familiar faces in chat. It's just like making my day, and I'm trying not to gush about it too much. But I I see you, and I'm, I feel very lucky that everyone is here watching. So all right, yes. let me let me set up our our timer here. And we'll definitely be on time because everyone knows that good girls are never late. Exactly. <laughs> wait a minute, that's not how this works at all. Hold on, wait. That's not how this works. Sorry, I was not prepared. Let's do this. All right, smooth outro.